today about jumping on. And it was honestly an honor. Um, I'm honored to just be able to serve, to serve you, to serve your team. I see the growth that you guys are having and it's phenomenal. And I've always had a mindset like there's enough for there's enough for all of us for all of us to eat. So there's no sense in being like, oh, this is my area. That's a poverty mindset. And that's not how God created us. So, um, yeah, like Nick said, my wife and I, we've been married um, actually 18 years. We just celebrated 18 years, December 20th. And uh, it's been a blast. <laughs> As you all know, for those who are married or significant other, some days are better than others. Uh, but we have just decided not to quit both on the same day. So if you don't get anything else from the call, just take that marriage tip. You just both can't quit on the same day. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, and then I have two kids. So my son, Adriel, he is uh, four, he'll be 14 on Friday. Um, that's crazy to even say that. And then my daughter, Maya, she is 12. Carla is running her to dance practice. Um, and then I have been doing insurance myself for 11 years. I've been with the Alliance, 10 of those 11. And those who don't know my backstory, I was with another insurance company for about 11 months. It was a terrible, terrible um, thing that I was doing, but I love the work ethic that they showed me. Um, that's one thing I will give them. Uh, they did teach us how to make phone calls um, and be consistent with our activity. And I brought that same attitude, that same hustle muscle over here um, to the Alliance and it has paid dividends. And so it's just a huge blessing for what we've been doing. And I'm honored to be on the call, honored to serve. And the reason Andy can make statements like that is because he has helped me so much. So if there's anything that Andy asked me to do, I'm in, I'm game. I don't question it. You know, even if I don't necessarily agree with it, I will still do it because I know his heart. Um, his heart is always in the right place. And you guys have a phenomenal leader in Nick. Um, his heart is always in the right place. He was on our call the Sunday before last, which is crazy because we just put in four new people this last week in class and on the calls. And so um, it's working, Nick. So hopefully this call will help you get that premium up and get more unique writers and personal producers this week um, after we're done here. So I guess that's how we measure it, right? I got more recruits, you get more premium. Ready? All right, so let's let's get into it. Um, so a couple of things that Nick wanted me to just touch on um, as a personal producer is the activity, like the workload, the dials, and we'll probably do a little bit of phone script, um, probably kind of go into that. But before we get into that, I just want to talk to you about mindset. Because what we do, you guys, it's not physically draining, but it can be mentally taxing, right? Um, what I mean by mentally taxing, let me give you an example. So this last week, I made 370 phone calls, 370 phone calls. Um, that's a lot for me, right? I typically make anywhere from 250 to 300, but 370 phone calls. And typically when you make 370 phone calls, you want to be writing 10 to $15,000, right? I submitted $3,000 last week. Um, so, right? Yep, yeah, you're, yours truly. Um, I just want you to know that it happens to the best of us is what I'm telling you. But my dedication is one of the things I tell myself, and you can be good to adopt this, is failure will never overtake me if my drive for success is strong enough. I'm going to give that to you one more time for those who like to write and take notes. Failure will never overtake me if my drive for success is strong enough. And that comes right out of The Greatest Salesman in the World by Og Mandino. It's a great little book. Um, again, that's one of those that I would highly recommend because what we're doing is up here, right? Um, so before you get on the phone and get ready to dial, you, we first have to get our mind right. Because there's been dial sessions where I went into it and my mind isn't right. And I talked to 10 people and don't book any appointments. And now I'm like, oh my gosh. And I'm talking about, yeah, I've been in it eight, nine years and still have instances like this because I'm not thinking right. So the first little nugget I would just give you is before you get on the phones, get your mind right. Um, read something that inspires you. Listen to something that inspires you. But take time to get your mind right. And for my brand new, brand new, brand new people, if you've never called a lead or you're just starting to call leads, let me tell you this. Don't let the first time you say your phone script be when you have a lead in your hand. Don't practice on a lead, right? Because there's money that's in there. Even if you have a manager who's giving you the lead and investing for you, uh, even though it's not your money, it's their money. Um, so there's money that goes into that lead and you don't want to be the first time you say the phone script or the first time you go through it. You don't want that to be a situation where you're first running through your phone script the first time you say hello and they pick up the phone. Um, so make sure you're practicing before you get on the phones because practice will help you get better um, and it will help you improve. And then another little nugget I want to give you is um, work will be talent all day long. Let me say that one more time. You can be the most talented person in the Alliance, 
But if I work harder than you, I will beat you all day long or vice versa. I can be the most talented person in the alliance. But guess what? If you book 20 appointments and I book seven, the odds are in your favor. You are going to have success because you're outworking me. And that's why I tell people all the time, like sometimes we'll be at the conference and convention and people ask me certain questions. And I tell this to people and I, I don't want to sound, you know, um, I don't want to sound like I'm too good, but I, honestly, I'm not that great. <laughs> I go through my numbers every year. I go through my numbers every quarter um, and I'm still about a 50 percent closer. I wish I was better. I'm not. Um, I still book about 50 to 60 percent of the people I talk to on the phone. So if I get 10 people on the phone, 50 to 60 percent will turn into an appointment. Um, and I still sit with about 70 percent of those people. Those are just the numbers. But that's what I love about this business is because the numbers are predictable. Yep. So if you know that you're a 50 percent closer and you want to write 10 applications this week, you got to sit with at least 20 people. Those are the numbers. And so now when you start tracking and keeping track of your numbers, this will help you be more observant of what it is you're trying to accomplish and to be able to get to your goals. And I think one of the things that helped me early on in the business when I first got started is every single week, Andy would ask me for a report of my numbers. And I would send it to Andy, Robbie, and Chris Hill. And I would send that report to them each week. And every week I would have to make an account for what I did. And so for me, I would be embarrassed if I didn't make enough phone calls. And I'll hit you with another story and we'll get into some of the technical stuff. So when I first started, um, Andy had asked me a question and he said, um, do you want to be broke? I was like, no, I don't want to be broke. He said, okay, you need to make some phone calls. I said, okay. So I'm in getting started. I was making phone calls. And then he sent me a text message. He said, how many phone calls did you make this week? And I said, not enough. And he said, how many? I said, not enough. I was embarrassed, right? Um, he said, how many? And then he gave me like the little number sign that you send in the text message, like the, the give me a number. And I said, uh, 110 phone calls. And he was like, yeah, you're right. You're going to stay broke if all you're making is 110 phone calls. Um, and these are the kind of conversations that I have with Andy on a regular basis. He's very direct, but I, it helps me be able to get over myself and still be able to move forward to the next level. Well, 110 phone calls, Marcus, that's a lot. Everybody has different goals. I don't like being broke. Now, here, let me tell you this too, is I don't like making phone calls. I do make phone calls. Make sense? So I don't tell myself I hate it. Um, it it's part of the business. But here's what I love. I love the results of what phone calls bring. Let me say that one more time. If you can fall in love with the results of what the phone call brings, the phone call is not that hard. What do you mean by results, Marcus? I'm glad you asked. So when we say results, the results are, hey, if I make 300 phone calls, I should expect about $3,000 to $5,000 deposit in my bank account, right? Um, it's kind of like Kobe Bryant. He didn't like waking up at four o'clock in the morning, but he likes the five championships. You follow me? MJ didn't like lifting on game days, but he likes the six championships. LeBron James does not like working as hard as he does, but he loves the four championships. This is your game. You are the man, the woman in the arena, and now you have a chance to be able to get results that no one can stop you from getting but you. So what results do you want? And then let's fall in love with those results. Because the result is what we're going after. Because our, our business is not based on good intentions. Um, it's not based on good thoughts or theories. Our business, what we get paid on is we get paid on results. So when you sit down to book appointments, don't say I'm going to make 200 phone calls. Because what if you make 200 phone calls and only book seven appointments, but your goal was 10? Oh, well, I made my 200, Marcus. But you only got seven appointments. So trick yourself into working more and do it like this. Here's what I tell people when they're brand new starting. 250 phone calls. That's what we tell our group. If you're full-time, you should be making no less than 250 phone calls every week. 250 phone calls. Um, now, a phone call, let me just, I don't know how many new people you got on here, Nick, but I'm going to break it down as if we're brand, brand new. So a phone call constitutes picking up the phone, putting the seven digits in, and pushing talk, right? That's a phone call. So 250 of those means every lead you call at least three times if they don't answer, right? So that's three phone calls on one lead. And then you go to the next one. So when we say 250 phone calls, that's good. But let's say your goal is 10 appointments this week. So you've made 250 phone calls, but you're at the seven appointments. Don't stop. Because we get paid on results. 
And so when we look at the results, the results are the ones that's going to be the end of the whole equation. I promise I'm going to get to that, Don. So the results are going to be the end product of what we're going for. So make sure you push to get the results that you're looking for and not necessarily just the activity because phone calls without appointments doesn't really benefit you. Your job is to make the appointment, right? Because appointments is what gives you an opportunity to be able to help a family. All right. So got into the mindset stuff. Now, as promised, I'm going to pull up my text message. I'm going to make sure I try to hit all of Nick's um, topics that he wanted to discuss. So talk about the dial. So we talked about that. Check. Um, now let's talk about like phone script. So let me say this on phone script. Everybody has different phone scripts. Um, you guys are in Nick's organization. Um, Mark Hutchison is the number two producer in the whole country. Right. So I'm not going to tell you anything that he probably will not tell you and do better. Uh, but since I'm on here, I'm going to give you what I say. Personally, this is me personally, I try to keep my phone script super simple. Um, if you have a phone script that's working, what I give you tonight, you don't have to scrap all of it because that's what I used to do when I first started. I would hear Jason Carey's phone script. I would change it. I would hear another guy's phone script who was doing good. Then the next week I would change my phone script. So my phone script was like bipolar. <laughs> I, had, I had a very inconsistent phone script based on what everybody else was saying. Uh, but what I want you to do is take what's working for you because on the phone script, I promise you this, it's not necessarily what you say, but it's how you say it. Let me listen to me carefully, okay? It's not what you say, but it's how you say it. So the first thing on your phone script that's critical is your intro. A person, now I've been doing sales since I was 17, right? So I've been doing sales for the last 21 years. Um, and what, what I know is the person decides whether or not they're gonna listen to you in the first 10 to 15 seconds. If you're getting hung up on early in your phone script, that means that there's something you're saying that's either not getting their attention or turning them off. So make sure when you're on your phone script, that first 10 to 15 seconds is critical. So when you when a person calls and you do the ring, ring, okay? Your phone script, and this is what I'm coaching people on. When you first call somebody, you should almost sound like you're the janitor and you hate your job. What, Marcus? Now, let me say this, Nick's a master at recruiting. When you're recruiting, you want energy and enthusiasm. Like that's how you hit them when you're recruiting, okay? But when you're on the phones, you want low and slow. So like, like almost like you're half pissed off that you have to call them, okay? That's the best way I can put that into, into terms so people understand it. So let me give you an example, two examples. This is the first one of how not to do it. Hey, Jill. Mm -mm. It sounds like a question and you sound like a telemarketer, okay? Or a lot of times people will say, is this Jill? Mm -mm. That's how telemarketers call me. So when a person says, Marcus, I'm saying everything you say, but they're asking questions like, hey, is this? That's not the phone script, right? You don't ever ask it. You wanna call the person as if you're their best friend. You want, you want them to think that they know you from back in the day, y'all friends from high school. So when you call your friend from high school, it's just, hey, Jill. See the difference? Low and slow. Hey, Jill. Or you could just say, Jill. Right? And then you want to go down. So your voice inflection is critical. So it's, I'm going to go through my whole phone script real quick. So I'm going to do two types of phone scripts. We got final expense and mortgage protection. So I'll run through both of those just so you guys can hear them. So the first one is like this. So Jill, unmute and role play with me if you will, please. Okay. Okay. So ring, ring. Hello. Hey, Jill. Yeah. Hey, Jill, this is Marcus with the Senior Benefit Center. And uh, Jill, I was getting back to you about that form you had sent in recently requesting some information on the mortgage protection. I'm sorry, back up because I'm doing final expense. See, we all make mistakes. Ring, ring. Hello. <clears throat> hey, Jill. Yeah. Hey, Jill, this is Marcus with the Senior Benefit Center. Uh, Jill, I was getting back to you about that postcard you had sent in recently, requesting some information on the final expense insurance, the one that pays for the uh, final expenses for Colorado residents. Oh, I, did I send that in? I don't remember sending that in. Let me make sure I got the right Jill. Um, you had put your age on here at 65, and you're still over there at 1234 Main Street in Aurora. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yep, and I don't remember what I sent in last month either, Jill. So my reason for calling, though, is they asked me to get the information you requested out to you about the final expense benefits. Um, are you still working, Jill, or are you retired? No, I'm retired. 
Okay. Now, Jill, is there any reason you wouldn't be home tomorrow about 10 o'clock? I can get the information you requested out to you. You know, 10 o'clock tomorrow won't work for me. I've got a funeral to go to. <clears throat> Ooh, yeah. I'm sorry for your loss. Uh, what time do you think you make it back from the funeral? About two in the afternoon. Okay. So is there any reason you wouldn't be home probably like around 3, 3.30? I can get this information you requested out to you? Yeah. No, I, I should be around then. Okay, perfect. And then, Jill, I didn't see a spouse or significant other. Is there a spouse or significant other? Yeah, my husband's Charles. Okay, he's going with you. He'll be back around that same time, too? He'll be around, yeah. Okay, perfect. So do me a favor, Jill. Let Charles know that Marcus will be there so he's not like, who's this at my door when I show up and we don't get in trouble, okay? Okay. Perfect. And again, my name is Marcus, and I'll see you tomorrow about 3, in between like 3 and 3.30. Okay. Okay, thank you, Jill. <clears throat> so... That's how we do it, okay? So Jill gave me some objections, so y'all heard. So for those who, I don't know, someone asked about the objections, okay? Now, she wasn't supposed to give me objections, but I didn't coach her on that ahead of time. So we, this is live, baby, live and in action. But what we do, whenever, whenever you get an objection, the key to any objection, um, I think it might've been Don that sent that text in there. The key to all objections is asking questions. Because whoever asks the most questions stays in control of the conversation. So when she said, I don't remember that, I said, let me make sure I have the right Jill. You are age 65 over there at 1234 Main Street, correct? Boom. She answered the question. I then took control back. You with me? Then we went into the, her next objection was she wouldn't be, she was retired, okay? But she wasn't going to be home at 10 because of the funeral. So instead of panicking, I asked another question. So what time do you think you'll be back from the funeral, Jill? And then Jill goes on and says, I should be back like around two. So when they say that, I don't set the appointment right at two. I normally give, my, depending on my schedule, I normally give them anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes or typically a 30 minute window from when I'm gonna actually see them. So three in between three or 3.30 is when we set up the appointment, okay? So when they're asking, <laughs> all right, yeah, we'll handle the already got taken care of too. So um, when they hit you with an objection, your job is to not panic, but to ask them a question. Um, and one of the fun little things that we do, I probably won't have time to do it tonight, but it's called the question game. Um, and it's weird, but we play it because it helps it stick, especially for newer people, um, because when they start playing the question game, they understand, oh, I'm supposed to ask this person a question. Because if you make a statement, that's when they hang up on you, right? And that's when they leave. But if you're asking questions, because as kids, we're all taught to do what? If someone asks you a question, what do you do? You answer the question. So they're, they're no different. So when we're on the phone, we're just playing a game. The game is to book the appointment. And the way we do that is by asking them questions and getting them engaged in the conversation. Okay. So let's do it again. <laughs> let's do it again. Okay. <clears throat> so Jill, um, I'm going to call you now on a mortgage protection. Okay. Now, I'm going to let's go through it and then you can give me any objection you want, Jill. Um, already taken care of was one of the requests they have on here. So if you want to, you know, yeah. anything you want, but um, listen to the subtle difference in the mortgage protection from the final expense. And then I'll go on like if you're calling older leads, what a subtle difference you want to make in the script on your intro. So uh, let's do it together, Jill. Ring, ring. Hello. Hey, Jill. Yeah. Hey, Jill, this is Marcus. Uh, Jill, I was getting back to you about this form you had sent in requesting some information on the mortgage protection that loan through U.S. Bank. Oh, okay. And Jill, my job is real simple. I'm just a person responsible for making sure we get the information you requested out to you. Jill, are you still over there at 1234 Main Street in Aurora? Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, now, Jill, they got me in your area tomorrow doing some deliveries. Uh, what time are you usually home from work tomorrow? Um, I don't work. Okay, so Jill, is there any reason you wouldn't be home tomorrow about 11 o'clock? I can get the information you requested out to you. Yeah, should be around tomorrow at 11. Okay, should be or would be? No, I can be home. Okay, the only reason I ask is because I got like 10 families to see, so it's important that if we set this up, you're going to be there. Is that fair? Yeah, gotcha. Okay, so uh, Jill, do me a favor, just write that down so you don't forget about me. Um, my name again is Marcus, and we said what time tomorrow? Uh, 11. Perfect. All right, and then give me a little window either side of that in case I get caught in this crazy Denver traffic. You know how that can be sometimes. I do. I okay, do. but I'll try to be there as close to 11 as possible. Okay. All right, Jill, so I will see you tomorrow at 11. Again, my name is Marcus. Gotcha. Perfect. So that one, she let me go through the whole thing. So that was a little better. You got to hear it. So a couple subtle differences I just want to coach on real quick. So when I'm calling final expense leads, 
I like to say I'm with the senior benefit center. Some people do, some people don't. It's just me because I, you, I, I have trained myself to slow down. But when I first started, I talked really fast. And so because I'm a fast talker, when I say the senior benefit center, it forces me to stop and slow down for them because people who are over 50, if you get on the phone talking fast to them, they think you're trying to get over them. So I make a conservative effort to slow down. Now, not slow enough so they can speak. So there's a couple key things in my cadence. You wanna speak slow enough so they can understand you, but fast enough so that they don't speak. So I did have some pauses, but the pauses are more like a comma instead of a period, if that makes sense. I don't wanna get all into the technical English stuff, but you just take a quick breath. Like David is my English major. So David will help me on that kind of stuff. But like when you're saying it, you take a quick breath. And then you go right into it, okay? Um, and then if you're pausing, that's when they make statements. So your job is to speak fast enough so that they don't speak, but slow enough so they can understand what you're saying, right? Now, a couple key things in the technique. I don't know if you guys are catching this, but I said her name probably five or six times in my phone script. The reason I do that is because everybody's favorite word is their name, everybody's. And so what it does is when I say their name a lot, it's like, hey, I like this guy. I don't know why I like him, but I like him because he's saying my name, right? So the more you say their name, and then here's another thing I do sometimes too when they're older, I might say Miss Jill or Miss Jordan, okay? Um, and that shows a sign of respect and endearment. Or if I'm talking to a guy, I might say Mr. David or Mr. Bragg, okay? And those are different things I've learned over the years that has helped me, I think, to be able to book appointments because now people trust me and they're getting to a place where like, I kind of want to meet this guy who's so polite. I kind of want to meet this guy and see what he looks like. OK, so it's all psychological, uh, but that's really what you want to do when it comes to your phone script. So now when you're calling Lee, so when I call it the senior benefit, when I call the final expense, I'm with the senior benefit center. OK, the script is pretty much the same. But then when I call a mortgage protection, I don't send with the mortgage protection center, right? Because they just got a loan. They got it modified. Other loan people are trying to still call them and do things like that. And they, a lot of times they shut me down. So I don't even do that. I just go right into the script and say what I need to say. Now, remember, it's not necessarily what you say, but how you say it. So the confidence, the voice inflections, the going down, the intonations, like all of that is real important. And again, I've been doing it for 10 years. So don't compare your, um, don't compare your, 10 years, you know, your, your, your two weeks or your two months to 10 years, right? You will get better over the course of time, but the way to do that is 20,000 hours, right? 20,000 hours are at anything, you become a master. I have 20,000 hours in. So, you know, I, I guess, and I hate to do this because I don't brag on myself too much, but yes, I'm pretty good on the phones, <laughs> okay? Um, so let's go through, because I got some people here. Um, they don't want you to come to the house. How do we handle that? And then I have, um, I already got it taken care of. So Jill, since you've been doing such an awesome job role playing with me, let's let's do that um, just so people can hear you got it taken care of, or I don't want you coming to the house, COVID or whatever, and uh, we'll we'll handle both of those. Okay. So, ring ring. Hello. Hey Jill. Yeah. Hey Jill, this is Marcus with the Senior Benefit Center, and uh, Jill, I was getting back to you about this postcard you had sent in a while back requesting some information on the final expense insurance, the one for Colorado residents? Oh, you know, I think my husband sent that in and I, he shouldn't have done that because I, we've already got that taken care of. I know, I hear that all the time, Jill, but my job is real simple. Um, they just asked me to get the information you requested out to you and then what you and your husband do with it is totally up to you. Now, Jill, are you guys still over there at 1234 Main Street? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, now I see on here that you put his age as 65 and uh, he put 65 and you're 63? Yes. Perfect. Now, Jill, are you and him still working or are you guys retired? No, he, he's retired, but I'm working. Okay. And Jill, what time are you usually home from work tomorrow? I can just get this information in your hands real quick. Hmm, tomorrow's Tuesday, right? Yes, ma'am. Um, I should be home about 530. Okay, perfect. Now do me a favor and write this on the calendar. Uh, Marcus will be coming by tomorrow about six to get the information to you. And like I said, what you do with it is totally up to you, but they asked me to get this into your hands. Okay. Perfect. So write that down so you don't forget about me and I'll see you tomorrow about six o'clock. And again, my name is Marcus. Okay. All right. 
And then I got another one that says we have insurance. I just filled it out. It's, it's similar on that one too, Kyle, when they say they already have insurance. Um, but we can we can hit it. So let's let's go through these because I know you get common objections. So let's do our common ones. Jill's one was common. Um, I don't know why he filled that out. Another one that's common is I don't remember it. <laughs> people, you'd be surprised. You'll get a brand new A lead that came in today and people <laughs> say that they don't remember it. Um, so that's why when you're getting leads, let me say this so I'm thinking about it. I recommend when you're brand new starting out to get a mix of leads um, and then have a set budget. So not all the brand new boys, you know, because some of those can cost 40 bucks. And if you only got $120 to invest, you get like four leads, three leads. <laughs> so um, what I would recommend is saying, okay, you know, each week you have a set amount of money that you're going to invest in leads. So if it's $120, if it's $200, if it's $500, if it's $1,000 a week, you got to have a set amount that you're going to invest in leads. And then you got to get a number of leads. I would recommend, especially for brand new people, when you're starting out, if you got $200 to invest in leads, you should get a mix of leads. I wouldn't get all brand new leads if I was brand new starting out because the same objection you get on a brand new lead, you will get on a lead that's six months old. Would you rather learn that experience or learn that lesson on a lead that's um, $8 or a lead that's $40? Because it gets expensive lesson if you're not booking appointments. And it's like if you're throwing darts at the dartboard. So if I was playing with Jill and I had darts, I say, Jill, do you want four darts to hit the bullseye or do you want 25 darts to hit the bullseye? 25. Right. So when you're getting leads, if you got $250 of leads that you want to invest in there, then you got to go ahead and make sure you get as many of those leads as possible when it comes to your lead and your lead mix. Um, so everybody has different lead mixes, different levels of where they want to invest that. Get with your manager and kind of get that kind of stuff situated of investments and what you should be investing. Um, and then the other thing before we get back into some objections is don't eat up your seed. Let me say that one more time. So if you get a thousand dollar commission this week, don't go get a new purse. Don't go get new shoes, right? Um, take that money and invest it back into your business so you can get another thousand the next week, right? And just take that money off the top and double down or where I'm from, we call that re-upping. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you just go in, you re-up and you keep growing your stash bigger because eventually you're going to need that money to continue to grow a business and take that into building an army. Um, so let's hit some of these other objections. Let me pull up my chat real quick and just see. So um, I know we're going to hit already got it taken care of. Just fill that out. Oh, just leave it in the mailbox. Ah, that's a good one. All right, Jill. So, so pick any one of these objections, Jill. So leave it in my mailboxes on here. I already got it taken care of. Um, and I don't want you to come to the house. So any, any one of those pick, I don't care. You ready? Yep. So ring, ring. Hello. Hey, Jill. Yes. Hey, Jill, this is Marcus with the Senior Benefit Center. Uh, Jill, I was getting back to you about this postcard you had sent in requesting some information on the final expense insurance, the one for Colorado residents. Now, Jill, my job is simple. I'm just the person responsible for making sure we get the information you requested out to you. Uh, Jill, are you still over there at 1234 Main Street in Aurora? Well, yeah, I am. But, you know, can you just put it in the mail? Jill, I wish I could, um, but I don't fit in the mailbox. Um, and the insurance company just makes sure that I see you and verify that you are Jill. And this is your uh, information that you put down here. So, Jill, what time are you usually home from work tomorrow? Well, you know, we're not having anybody come to the house right now with this whole Omnicron thing going on. And, and we're just we're just not having anybody come to the house. I totally respect that. And so what they asked me to do is make sure I have my hand sanitizer and my mask. So I'll make sure I have that on. Um, and if you want to, we make sure we even say six feet apart. Uh, what time are you usually home tomorrow? About four. Okay. So is there any reason you wouldn't be there about 4.30? I can get this information over to you? No, we should be home then. Okay, perfect. So Jill, do me a favor. My name is Marcus. Um, and write that down for tomorrow about four, between four and 4.30 in case I get caught up in traffic. Uh, but I'll be there as close to four as possible. Okay. 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 Perfect. And that's typically how it goes. Most people won't push too hard on the objections after you hit them with one or two and you overcome it. Um, some people, if they're just adamant about it and they're like, no, you're not coming to the house. We're not doing it. I still recommend pushing a little bit like I did. I got the mask. Um, we'll stay six feet apart. I'll make sure everything is good, um, you know, and then go right back into your question. So what time are you home from work tomorrow? Right. That was the key. It was the question that I asked her to take back control. And then the next thing was, if they say, you know what, Marcus, I'm just, you're just not coming to my house. Okay, perfect. Since I got you here, 
in these special cases, they will let us do it over the phone. Um, do you got time now or should we do tomorrow sometime? And you just try to set an appointment from there. I don't recommend the phones though, because I've been doing this for a while. It's a lot harder to sell insurance over the phone than it is in person. It's harder to influence people. Um, and ultimately I'm gonna have you defer to your manager because some agencies don't even want you doing phone sales. So um, I'm gonna let Nick kind of handle that on a manager basis based on what you guys do in your agency. Uh, but for me, like, don't give up. If you're, if you, let's say you got a person that's getting 20 contacts and only setting three appointments, that's indication that they're giving up too easy on the first objection. That's what that shows. Um, or if you have a situation where the person has 20 contacts, they book 15 appointments, but only have three sits, they're not doing a real good job of tying it down on the back end. Um, and I didn't do much tie downs tonight. I can do that if you guys want to hear one real quick, just so you can see what that looks like. Uh, but these are different things like when you're keeping track of your numbers, if you keep track of your numbers, your manager will know how to coach you. Um, so keeping track of your managers is to your benefit because now some of us are hiring people across the country. So if you got someone in Atlanta and then you're in Colorado, the only way you can really coach them is if they give you their numbers so you can see exactly what the problem is and we can help you diagnose it. Um, so I'll go through another one, Jill. You can give me an objection if you want to, um, and we'll try to handle it. On this one, I'm going to slow down and do some tie downs so you guys can hear it. All right. So ring, ring. Hello. Hey, Jill. Yes. Hey, Jill. This is Marcus. Uh, Jill, I was getting back to you about this form you had sent in requesting some information on the mortgage protection. Now, Jill, my job is simple. I'm just a person responsible for getting the information over to you. Uh, Jill, are you still over there at 1234 Main Street? Yes, we are. Okay, perfect. Um, now, Jill, like I said, my job is to get the information over to you, and they got me in your area tomorrow doing some deliveries. Uh, what time are you normally home from work tomorrow? I can get this information over to you. About five, but you know, I think that we've already kind of met with someone. We didn't really uh, conclude anything, but we, we did kind of meet with somebody. That's exactly why they gave it to me, Jill, because we got a lot of new people in the area who don't really know what they're doing. Um, and what we found out is sometimes they're showing numbers that are just way too expensive. Um, so, Jill, like I said, my job is just to do a quick review for you um, and make sure we can find something that makes sense. And you said you get home at what time normally? Around five. OK, so, Jill, is there any reason you wouldn't be there tomorrow in between like 530 and six? I can just get this information to you real quick and do that review. No, I'll, I'll be home. OK, perfect. Um, so now I got one, two, three, four Main Street. But, Jill, are those numbers on the front of the house or are they on the mailbox? You know, we've got them on the house, we've got them on the mailbox, we got them on the garage. It's overkill. Got it. Okay, perfect. I like that. And then, Joe, what color is the house? It's a, a blue house with white trim. Okay, and I only ask that because it gets dark early now, so I, and I have to wear glasses, so it helps me see. Um, and then, is there a major cross street that I should be aware of, Joe? Yeah, we're we're just a little east of uh, of Parker and uh, Quincy. Okay, got it. Yeah, I know right where you guys are. So write that down so you don't forget about me. Um, and I'll be there in between like 5.30 and 6 tomorrow. Uh, again, my name is Marcus. Okay. All right, Jill. Okay. Now, let me say this and I'll open it up for questions. One of the things that we're, you know, you guys have probably heard this, but we call it AIM. This is the AIM strategy, David. So with AIM, it's acknowledge what they said. And then, so A is acknowledged. So if you're taking notes, write this down. So A is the acknowledge. So we acknowledge what they said. Yeah, we had someone already go through it with me. Yep, Jill, we got a lot of newer people who don't know what they're doing and they're giving people stuff that's too expensive, right? So I acknowledged it. And then you ignore it. <laughs> that's the I, the I is ignore. So we acknowledge, we ignore, and then we move on. The move on would be your question. So we acknowledge it. Yep, we got people who are new, don't know what they're doing, showing stuff that's too expensive. Um, they just asked me to get the information to you so you know exactly what your options are. What time are you home from work? That's the move on. You with me? So it's like, wait, didn't you hear what I said? I did, but I don't care. <laughs> My only job is to figure out when you're going to be home so I can come get this information to you. So the AIM strategy. Uh, so that's the phone script in a nutshell, some of the mindset stuff. Um, and then scheduling, normally when you're calling leads, because he asked me to touch on schedule. So when you guys call leads, it's important that when you're calling those leads, is you, you want to make sure you're going to see them within 24 to 48 hours of making that phone call. Um, that will help your show ratio a lot. So if you're dialing on Monday, you should be seeing those people Tuesday, Wednesday, right? Or if you're dialing on Thursday, you should be seeing those people Friday, Saturday. Um, don't do one of those where you call them Monday and they say, can you come next Monday? 
and then you're all fired up like I got appointments and three of them are next week and you booked five no you got two appointments bro <laughs> so appointment constitutes a day and a time of they've agreed to see you within 24 to 48 hours um, so make sure if they're like, oh, well, I'm not going to be here. What I tell them if they say they can't do it on the day that I'm running is I'll stop and I'll say, OK, uh, well, next time I'm in that area, I'll touch bases with you to see if I can set up a good time. And next day might be tomorrow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm, I might call the same lead tomorrow because they're going to be home on Thursday and I just want to stay within my 48 hour rule. <laughs> they don't know that. That's that's for me, though. So um, those are just some nuggets. I think that really helps me just kind of go through my text message from Nick, make sure I hit everything. And then um, the last thing is the convention. So we got to make sure we make it to convention. Um, I remember my first, my first tick, my first convention uh, was in Dallas, Texas. Andy called me on a Wednesday. Um, now Nick and David Fleming have seen this and saw how this goes. Andy's like, "When I want you to do something, like let's go now, right?" Um, they got to go on the jet with Andy to go to Dallas. I didn't get a jet. He called me. He said, "Marcus." You know, that scripture talks about getting wisdom and knowledge. I said, yeah, I'm familiar with that one. He says, well, that's where you are in this business. You need to come down here and meet me. I said, down here where? He said, Texas. I paused. No, he said, Dallas. I paused. I said, you talking about Texas, Andy? He said, yeah. I said, okay. Um, and then he said, I said, well, when is it? He said, Friday. And I called me on a Wednesday. So I'm like, okay, was it a couple of Fridays from now? Do I have time to prepare? He's like, no, it's this Friday. So I was like, huh, Okay. And then he asked me a question. He was like, you got any money? I was like, nope, <laughs> I don't have no money. And he was like, all right, you uh, got a relative. I said, yeah, I got a couple of relatives. You got anybody who loves you? He's like, yeah, I got some people who love me. He said, well, let you borrow money for a plane ticket. I said, no, Andy, they won't. I'm that relative you hit the red button on. I'm the, I'm the guy that you know they, they've given money to already, so they don't want to hear from me again. He's like, okay. And then he says, do you have a credit card? I said, Andy, I do have a credit card, but I want you to know, that I'm paying my mortgage with the credit card. So I don't know if any of you have ever been there where it's just tight on cash. You know that going to convention would be good for you, but you just don't feasibly see how it's possible. But we live in America, and if you want to get it done, you will get it done. So I said, yeah, I got a credit card, but I'm paying my mortgage with the credit card. And he said, I'll make you a deal. I said, okay, what's the deal? He said, if you can figure out how to get down here, I'll cover the conference ticket, the plane ticket, and I'll feed you. I said, all right, you know, especially food, you know, brothers, we like us some food, free food. So I'm like, all right, so um, let me talk to the missus, right? Because I'm married. So you can't tell your wife that you're going to Texas next day plane ticket. You know what I mean? So I'm talking to Carla. I'm like, babe, we're going to, I'm going to, uh, Andy called me. I'm all excited. She's like, who's that? I was the president of the company. I feel good, right? She's like, well, what's up? I said, well, he wants to meet me. She said, okay, good. Where's he going to be at? And then I go into sales mode. I'm like, well, here's the thing. <laughs> He's going to be in Dallas. And she looks, she said, Texas markers. I said, yeah. And she said, okay, well, when is it? I said, well, here's the other thing. It's on Friday. She looked, she said, you talking about this Friday? I said, yeah. She rolled her eyes, y'all, went to bed. She didn't say good night, no kiss, no nothing. So I clearly am not going to Dallas, right? So then we wake up and here's how small the thread is. I probably wouldn't even be here 10 years later having this call with you guys if she didn't say this. She wakes up the next morning and she says, Marcus, something is telling me that you need to go. I said, are you serious? I said, yeah. She said, yeah. I said, no, for real. So I know we got a lot of ladies on the call. And I know some of you ladies, you probably don't do this like my wife does. But sometimes my wife intentionally would tell me to do things to see if I was dumb enough to do them. And then if I did them, I'm in trouble sleeping on the couch for a week because I should have known better. So I'm asking her, I'm like, babe, so this isn't one of these like tests. Like if I get this plane ticket, I can come home. Like I can sleep in the bed. She's like, yes. And what she told me is she said, yes, Marcus, because if we want something different, we have to do something different. And that's what I'm going to tell you. Conference is on the 20th, right? Um, today is the 10th. You got 10 days. It's well worth every dollar. I would not be here had I not went to conference because I have rough days where I want to throw in the towel. But I saw the bigger picture of what I'm doing it for and who I'm doing it with. If you don't have your conference ticket, get your conference ticket. Get your conference tickets. You can get it right off the arc under the events page. And it, it's, I promise you, it's a life changing event. And people say, well, I don't need all that rah rah. Those are the main people that need it. <laughs> the ones that be like, I don't need all that. I don't need all that. Yes, you do. Right. Or the ones that say, I, I just want to go out and make some money. I'd rather go out and sell for those three days and get some commission. What you learn at convention is going to be life changing. So when you do go into someone's home, you can take that information and apply it. 
and you can be able to use that and grow as a person and grow your business. NatCon, um, I promise you, you don't want to miss it. And it's like, well, I don't know how I'm gonna get there. We live in America, y'all. <laughs> we live in America. Sell your Xbox, sell your couch. You know what I'm saying? Like get your credit card, thousand dollar limit. Well, you tell me to go into debt markets for this. If you know you were gonna win, what would you do? If you knew without a shadow of a doubt you couldn't fail at this business, what would you do? 